I used to drive a taxi cab in San Francisco many years ago, and um, when I'd be listening to the radio on KPFA, I don't know if you guys remember KPFA in Berkeley, they used to broadcast Alan Watts lectures, and they were terrific. You know, it was like my first introduction to Buddhism, and he had a lot of talks about, you know, the tenets of Buddhism and everything, but there was one time he did a talk, and he talked about the immediacy of being in the moment being in the moment and so I literally was driving on the central freeway and then when he said that I just I was just rooted to my car thinking this is all I've got so as a practice when I go to gigs oftentimes I will practice meditation and just say the only thing that exists is my hands on the wheel right now <laughs> that's all I do because it helps calm my nerves but it helps center me so um, I wrote this song and it's called take a moment and you have to help me sing it. Okay, so we're going to go. When I start to sing the chorus, take a moment to be right here, right now. You've got to answer me, okay? So here it goes. Take a moment to be. Take a moment to be right now. Take a moment to be right here, right now. up with progress marching with machines I'm fumbling for the off switch and I'm so jittery from caffeine how do we keep going 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 when everyone is all turned on is there a way of knowing between the darkness and the dawn the flower needs the night time About Ron. It's wonderful to have him in the mix, isn't it? Thanks to both of you, yes. And we are right here, right now. 
Near my apartment building in the Upper Haight is a building with a large blank wall. Maybe you've seen it. On the wall, somebody has painted the words, listen to this wall in large block letters. I've been listening for years, but this week, as I cast about for a theme for today's lesson, I decided to listen to another wall, that wall over there. On the wall here in the sanctuary, you'll see paintings by Rebecca Ellis of the Fruits of the Spirit. Now, Rebecca will be with us, in a, uh, by the way, in a few weeks to talk about her art. But one of those paintings spoke to me this week. It really did speak to me and urged me to speak about patience. So as I'm urged to do in the hate, I listen to the wall. Patience is a quality that's sometimes missing these days. Patient, impatience seems to be more the way of the world. We want what we want and we want it now. I remember a poem from my childhood that went like this. Patience is a virtue, possess it if you can. It's seldom found in women and never in a man. <laughs> I figured it was okay to quote that poem because it's not really sexist. It, it, it disparages both genders equally. I was reading about a study back in the 60s and 70s at Stanford University concerning patients. Children were given a small treat like a cookie or a marshmallow. They were told that if they waited a short time until the research, researcher to return to, if they waited to eat their treat until the researcher returned a short time later, they would receive two treats or a preferred treat. If they ate their treat, in that interim, they wouldn't get the second treat. Of course, some of the children couldn't wait and ate their first treat right away. And I have a feeling I would have been among them. Some waited to get the additional treats. They were more patient. Interestingly, in follow-up studies some years later, the children who were patient and waited generally turned out to have better outcomes in their childhood. 10 years later, some of the patient children were reported to have better educational attainment, were more competent, and had better body mass index. Patient pays off, and the body mass index is what convinces me that I wouldn't have waited. What is patience? One definition is that patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Another definition that I like is the quality of being able to calmly endure suffering, toil, delay, vexation, or the like. Any definition that uses the word vexation is okay with me. <laughs> being impatient can lead to difficulties. It can make us anxious and distraught. According to an article uh, that I found on the web, the website glenora.net called The Quality of Patience, Impatience contributes to feelings of anger, dissatisfaction, and failure. It can ruin relationships with friends, partners, coworkers, and children. Being impatient is not an attractive quality and results in feelings of guilt for your out of control behavior. Being impatient can get you into real trouble. It can even make you physically ill at times. Patience, on the other hand, is calming. It creates confidence, decisiveness, and a thoughtful outlook on life. Patience leads to wisdom and success. We are in a better state of mind when we are patient. We are easier for our friends, families, and acquaintances to deal with and be around when we exhibit patience. Now, patience seems to be a combination, I read, of other qualities. First, self-control, being able to control our own reactions to a situation and endure it without complaint. Next, humility, accepting that you are no more important than anyone else, and there's no particular reason why you should not wait. And finally, generosity, smiling at the world even when it seems to be conspiring against you. When we are impatient, we are more difficult to be around. Our impatience affects and infects those around us. Either they become more impatient along with us or they are put off by our impatience. 
We've all heard the tongue-in-cheek prayer, God, give me patience and give it to me now. In this day and age, we expect gratification right away. We have trouble exhibiting patience. We are so accustomed to wanting something, ordering it on Amazon and getting it within a day or two. When something we order isn't available on Amazon Prime and it takes a few days to arrive, we get anxious and we wonder, why can't we have it right now? And I plead guilty to my own charge. I've gotten to expect results now and grow restless until my wants and needs are fulfilled, just like many others. There are a few ways to cultivate patience, I read. And here are some suggestions. Identify something that you want to do or buy, but cannot afford right away and save up until you can. Go sit in an art gallery and look at a single picture for an extended period of time. Take up gardening and pursue it over a period of weeks or months. Plants are going to grow at your rate. Read classic books, books by um, Dickens and such, weren't written for fast consumption. And put away screens for a set period of time. Now, I almost didn't include that last one as I would find it the most difficult. But all those suggestions can help you find patience in your life. And you don't feel like you have to try them all at once. Just pick one and stay with it for a while. Now, I do want to address a time when impatience is appropriate, and that is in situations of injustice. Urging patience when injustice is rampant only takes the side of the oppressor and those who propagate the injustice. I do believe that God is impatient with our human inclination towards injustice and oppression. Keeping others underfoot and without rights is not a situation in which to be patient. When the rights of women are taken away by the Supreme Court, when people of color are killed by the police for minor infractions, when the lives of LGBT people are at risk because of government decrees around the world, when any number of other situations occur across our globe, this is not a time to be patient. We must be impatient and urge change immediately and at once when lives are at stake and making a difference is important. So we have a conundrum. We are called to be patient in our personal lives, but in the wider world where injustice seems to reign, we are called to be impatient. It's a balancing act. But I urge you to be patient in your daily life. Take some deep breaths when you want something right away. And remember that old saying, good things come to those who wait. And so it is. Amen. So let's turn now to a time of meditation. I invite you to get comfortable wherever you are. Relax a little. Release the stress and tensions that you may be feeling. Breathe them out. Take some deep breaths. Just find some time to let go of that stress, let go of any anxiety. And let's begin by bringing your attention to your breath. Find comfort in the simple movement of your inhale and your exhale. Breathe in, breathe out. Now let your breath expand. Breathing in just a bit deeper, and breathing out just a bit longer. Let it slow you down and bring you to wherever you are. Your body may be asking for your attention. Perhaps your nose itches. 
or your arm wants to move. Or maybe your leg wants to stretch. Without responding to any of these requests, see if you can simply notice what your body is asking for and sit with it. Resist the urge to scratch or stretch or move for just a little bit of time. Instead, just focus on your breath while you wait, breathing out any discomforts through your exhale. Now see if you can recognize any thoughts you may have had. Thoughts telling you to do something. Or thoughts reminding you of the tasks for the day ahead. See if you can imagine these thoughts as clouds floating above you. You here, separate from them. Choosing in this moment not to engage in their demands but instead sitting here patiently, calmly, in the space of presence and nothingness. Just being. Focusing instead on your breath. Breathing in. Breathing out. And waiting watching the clouds go by. Let yourself feel the spaciousness, the power of being still, the beauty of not reacting the power of patience. Now think of a recent moment when you were impatient. Perhaps it was in a heated moment with a loved one or out in public with a stranger. Perhaps in your car or in private with yourself. Just bring that scene to mind, letting any judgments or emotions that may accompany it float away like those clouds. As you see this moment, see if you can breathe that spaciousness into it with every breath out, covering it with love, and patience, and patience every time you exhale. Forgive yourself. 
Forgive yourself for all those times when you have not been patient. And also hold on to this feeling right now. This openness. This calmness. This lightness. So you can call upon it the next time you want more patience. Now take a deep breath again. Let it out slowly. Move your fingers and toes. Roll your shoulders if you like. If you need to scratch, go ahead. Open your eyes. Return to wherever you are. And know you can return to this place of patience whenever you need. Jerry, that was perfect until you told me not to scratch that itch. <laughs> Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we are an ocean of love. The Unity Spiritual Center, we have an inspiring vision, an exciting mission, and compelling values by which we strive to live. Please join with me in saying them aloud. Our vision is... Centered in God, we co-create a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. Our mission is we are a creative, joy-filled spiritual community dedicated to healing, inspiring, and in transforming the lives of all people through prayer, education, and love. And our values are, we are spirit-led, generous with resources, inclusive, joyously creative, and guided by integrity. And in this space, feeling so inspired by our vision, mission, and values, and feeling so enriched by what we've experienced here today, let us take time now to be a channel for enrichment through our generous tithes and love offerings. As Patrick shares the next beautiful song, please take that time to write out a check to USC, or if you're on Zoom, to make a donation online. If you are here in the sanctuary, the ushers will come forward to take your offering. Practicing the, spirit, the, the principle of tithing ourselves as a spiritual community, we are pleased to tithe 10% of offering collected every Sunday to various unity organizations and local nonprofits in our city. And let us now take a moment to bless our tithes and love offerings as we cup them in our hands or next to our hearts. Let us say our offering blessing, which is on your screen. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. You know, I thought when I got older, things would slow down in a certain sense inside just as much dynamic development inside of me, you know, as you get older, because you realize, okay, as Jerry was pointing out, being patient, I, uh, we have moved up to five and a half acres up in El Dorado Hills, and my kids and the grandkids have moved onto the property with me, and so it's a very different role now for me to be a parent and a grandparent, you know, you have to be, 
you have some perspective. So when my daughters are going, you know, you just go, it's going to be okay. Your kid's going to be all right. Trust me. They're not the serial killer you think that they are. Don't worry. It's going to be good, you know? So it is a very different perspective. And so when I moved up there, I told my wife, I said, well, we used to live on the ocean. So the only place I'm going to live is near a river if we move. So we're near the American River, thankfully. So this is a song about letting it roll. And you're going to have to help me sing it. And I'll show you where. So let it roll, let it roll, let it roll. Sing it again. Let it roll, let it roll, let it roll. Millions of people in the very same boat. So let it roll. 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 Put your hands together. Here we go. Let it roll. Think about problems that you got inside your soul. You let it roll. Don't hold on. Let it roll. Just let it roll. Let it roll. Ah, let it roll. 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 